Hi, it's Rob Moore here and welcome to The Disruptive Entrepreneur. I'm with my really good friend, Matt Fides. Uh, Matt was Michael Jackson's bodyguard for 10 years. And while some things are confidential, what we can say is he's been very close to um, some people in the title of this broadcast. He can't say who, what, how, where or when, but believe me, he has. And we're going to discuss now the brand of Harry and Meghan. Now, hot off the press has been statements from... Uh, the palace and from Prince William and of course Op the Oprah show uh, you know there was some sensitive material in there about mental health and suicidal thoughts and you know se security and just you know maybe leaving people be of course I suppose Matt let's start with if your wife is having suicidal thoughts what do you think about doing a broadcast about it to maybe a billion people on Oprah. And if you want security and privacy, what did you think about that as a strategy from them? Well, I think the suicidal thoughts part is it's not the greatest idea to put somebody with suicidal thoughts, in my opinion, in front of a billion people on the most high profile chat show in the world, Rob. And um, of course, they're highlighting the fact of where they are People know where they are in California. California is swarmed with paparazzi and media. So it's it's almost going against what they're trying not to happen. Prince Harry keeps saying all the time he doesn't want to repeat what happened to Princess Diana, his mother, where in fact his wife at the moment is the most famous hunted woman on the planet. No doubt about it. There'll be paparazzi everywhere. And uh, yeah, this won't help her mental health. I mean, I know what happens when things like this kick off in the media. She's going to be hounded like crazy. I mean, it's just going to be people in the trees with cameras. They're not going to be able to go anywhere. Um, so it's going to be very, very, very difficult. I think the mental health bit, uh, we've both been linked to people who've had mental health issues. We know they need professional help. They don't need to be broadcasted to over a billion people and then been hunted down for. This thing will go on for months, Rob. This thing will go on for forever now. So I don't think it was the smartest thing in the world to do, but obviously they have their personal reasons for it. So just to let everyone know what's going on, this is an experimental episode from Matt and I because we're simultaneously living to, um, well, it'll, the potential reach is nearly half a million people and we're doing a clubhouse room at the same time. So just to let you know why Matt and I might be looking down or looking at our phone because we're muting, I'm muting, muting, I'm muting. Uh, so Matt, so if you, I'm, I'm inclined to see your point of view that I, I think personally, Harry probably did the right thing. If his wife is having suicidal thoughts to try and pull him out of that situation and therefore personally, not that my opinion matters more than anyone else's, but getting him out of that situation that caused that and maybe out of the Royal family, I can see why he would do that for the love of his wife and the protect protection of his children. But then you said to, to, to broadcast it to a, a, maybe a billion people through Oprah, you feel could make her the hunt most hunted woman in the world ever. Harry doesn't want a repeat of what happened with Princess Diana, but could that be a self-fulfilling prophecy? We hope not, of course, but, you know, broadcasting it out there. But then what a lot of people said to me, Matt, was that they had a right to share their side. They had a right to share their truths because they hadn't been able to and, you know, they hadn't had the, the security and the protection and, the, you know, that there hadn't been enough control from the family of the media. So just talk a little bit about that. And then also, do you therefore think that this was a strategy of theirs to launch their brand? Because let's be honest, what better way to launch a brand than to go on Oprah? Well, it's the biggest network in the, in the world, Rob. And Oprah's a friend of theirs. She went to their wedding. And no doubt they had content control. I'm sure they did. I mean, Oprah didn't sit there just not knowing what was going to come out of Meghan and Harry's mouth. She's not going to give them that kind of huge platform. So she would have known that there would have been a lot of some crazy stuff said. You know, she would have wanted at least 10, 15 things to be said in order for them to have that world incredible platform. She's the most successful broadcaster in the world. She's huge, multi billionaire. So I think at that point, people think that she's, they've just sat there and they've just done this interview without any questions. I find that very hard to believe. I've not been on Oprah, I've been most, most of the major TV shows in the world, but I know people have been on Oprah. And it's all planned out beforehand. They know exactly what's going to do. Michael Jackson went on Oprah in 1993. And it was a huge success for him. It was being live around the world. Um, but this was edited. This was not live. This was edited. So there's a certain amount of control there for them. 
And the whole Princess Diana thing, I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there. And interestingly enough, Rob, through working with Michael, I got to know Mohammed Al Fayed very well. Now, Mohammed Al Fayed, for people who are, don't know who he is, I can't remember. He's the owner, he was the owner of the biggest, most famous kind of, uh, I could call it a shop, could you? Um, Harrods, basically, uh, in London. And um, Mohammed, a multi billionaire, very successful man. He's also got the Ritz Hotel in Paris, where Princess Diana left that night to get to sadly lose her life in that fatal accident in the tunnel. And she was dating Dodi Al Fayed, Mohammed's son. So the key here is, is that Princess Diana's security was taken away from her by the royal family. And she only had two members of security, which is very unusual. She hasn't got the normal police protection, or police protection with her. She just had Mohammed Al Fayed's personal security looking after her. And I'm sure they did the very best they can. But she is the most famous woman at the time, in the world at the time. So very, very difficult to protect somebody against all the paparazzi, especially in Paris. Now, when you go to California, what's interesting about California is that pictures taken there are sold back to England. So if you're just any type of celebrity in the UK, just a reality star, as soon as you land at LAX in uh, Los Angeles, the airport there, you're going to be pat silly because, because of the currency and because of our ruthless tabloid nature we have in the UK, big agencies sell pictures back to the UK. So what you'll find at the moment around them will be swarms of paparazzi and so on. And they have got a right to speak, but I do think that certain things are like family matters. Yeah, there's like, a, I know they're not a normal family, but what is a normal family, you know? So like Tony Robbins always said, everyone's got a dysfunctional family to some degree. We all fall into that category, but they are royal family. But I think some of the things should have been dealt privately. There's no doubt about that. Did it need to be aired to the world, especially like, you know, Megan's mental health issues really find that tough right now. This really isn't gonna help the situation. And pointing out the security issue, it's kind of putting your hands up to terrorists and everybody. Hi, guys, we're a target. This is where we are. And, uh, you know, we know I've done a bit of research now. I actually thought Prince Harry inherited 30 million from his mother, Princess Diana, and it turns out to be 15 million. And I can tell you, well, from my experience working with Michael Jackson and other people who are, I, I guess you could compare Michael's fame at the time, at the peak of his career, to Prince Harry. He was pop royalty is that 15 million will be gone in a year. It'll be gone in a flash. That, that won't be enough to cover the security. So for them, I guess at the moment, they've got to start thinking about making some serious money fast. They're not getting any palace funding. I do not believe for a minute it's right that um, the palace should cut his security off because he couldn't help the fact he was born into the royal family. It's not his fault, is it? He should be given security and, and that should be... He should, be, he should be personally looked after. And, and maybe his son should be too, I think. Uh, but he took his own hands. I do know, Rob, he's a very clever guy. I mean, I was kind of involved in the, the tour of South Africa and did a lot of um, reporting on the back of that as well and advising on the back of that. And he was very much in control of where Megan would go so she would be safe in South Africa with, with their son, Archie. And he would go off to the more dangerous parts of South Africa on his own. He, so he's very much in control. He's a clever guy. Prince Harry is not a clown. I know we've seen him in pubs and doing his things and the whole Vegas thing many years ago. But he he probably like more one of us. I saw him at Cheltenham Race Festival once and win the VIP tent. And he, he recognised me to the Michael Jackson link. Obviously, Princess Diana was very good friends with Michael. And um, he wanted to meet Michael. And he, he was drunk and he was doing the moonwalk in a tent, not, not behaving like a normal prince would. You know, it's totally like, like a normal guy. So I think it's interesting what's going on, but some things should stay private, but it's security side, they gotta make money fast. They really have to. Thanks, Matt. That's really fascinating. And just for everyone tuning in here, Matt was Michael Jackson's bodyguard for 10 years, seen it all in terms of media, press, publicity, the effects of the media. So Matt's talking from a lot of experience. Based on that experience of what he saw with Michael Jackson, he believes now that um, Megan may be the most hunted woman in the world. Um, and maybe if you wanted to stay private, that was maybe not the smartest play. But, you know, we're just discussing that. Do I personally feel um, that they have their right to express their opinion? Yes. Not that they care what I think, but I think we all have our right to express our opinion. I did feel like they could have not thrown the royal family under the bus so much. And whether it's right or wrong, whether it was true or false, what was said, if you want your own security, probably wise to keep them on side and not. 
I agree with you that it feels harsh that their security would be withdrawn. Matt, you told me it's a seven figure sum a year to have a security detail. And I agree with you, 15 million. I know some people will be like, oh, you know, they're not multimillionaires. They don't need the money. I don't agree. A, a few million quid is not enough to live on. And if you need a massive security detail that costs millions of pounds and, you know, even without the lavishness, their lifestyle is going to cost a lot of money. And I personally believe everyone has the right to make a living, a good living, even a fortune, as long as they're offering value. So in light of all of this, Matt, let's move into their brand. Um, and, you know, and maybe where that's moving forward, because let's be honest, they have got to be one of the hottest brands now. And um, I've been doing my research as well. Um, their Netflix deal is reputedly worth a hundred million dollars. There will be clauses in that contract that they have to promote that. Netflix are not going to give them a hundred million dollars and say, oh, yeah, we'll do all the work. <laughs> They're going to have to promote that. Um, I remember um, listening to Michael Caine and he said, uh, and, and whilst it wasn't specifically this, it was this. He said, when you get paid $10 million to do a movie, you really get $2 million for the film and $8 million to promote the film. Because, of course, when you make a film, you've got to travel the world doing all the promotions. So that $100 million is they're, they're going to have to earn that, I think. They're going to have to go and promote that around the world. And so what better way to do it than go on Oprah? Um, also, Spotify podcast, their deal is reputedly $54.5 uh, .5 million. Again, what, what does Spotify want? They want users. They want subscribers. So they'll want Harry and Meghan to do as much work as possible. Like I've just done a brand deal with Sage and they want me to do one uh, post on my Instagram and five stories. They don't just want to give me money. You know, they actually want promotion for that. So um, let's talk about that, Matt. And just before we do, though, just to let everyone know what's going on. If you've joined us on Club Bells, Matt and I, for the first time ever, we're doing um, a five-way live and we're doing a clubhouse room at the same time, which is why you can see us looking at our phone, muting, unmuting. I think we'll probably do five or ten minutes max left on the live. And then I'd like you all to come to Clubhouse where we're going to go into the details of it. Leah, who's here as a moderator in the Clubhouse room, said, oh, I bet there's a load of secrets about Michael Jackson Matt can't share. Matt will share it. Um, and in, in more privately on Clubhouse, we'll dish into some of the, the, the details that maybe we wouldn't want to promote on a live. Also, Matt, um, apparently Megan is negotiating with Givenchy and apparently they've trademarked their brand Sussex Royal. And, and this could be for books, for journals, all sorts of stationary footwear, sweaters, pajamas, campaigning material. Uh, and um, it's also been said that this could be the stepping stone for a 500 million or even a billion dollar brand. What are your thoughts on all of that? And don't forget to unmute yourself on Clubhouse. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that they will be. They're, they're the power couple of the world right now. I thought what they did, which was unfair, if you're going to make allegations about people in the royal family, you kind of need to name them because everyone's pinpointing everybody in the royal family now saying, who said that, who thought this, and so on. So I don't think that's a very smart move for them at all. Um, just to give you a bit of an insider knowledge too, is that back in 2002, it, we, were, we, we were told Prince Harry and Prince William wanted to meet Michael Jackson again and wanted to catch up after their mother's passing and so on. And uh, Michael flew in on the request of uh, Lord Janna at the time. Um, and he was told that chances are he was going to be Sir Michael Jackson. He was going to be given an honorary sir and knighted, but a little bit like Steven Spielberg did, and get to meet William and Harry. So he flew into London. We had a tour of Parliament and everything else, and it was all going to go ahead. And then suddenly out of nowhere, we get told that Prince Charles put a stop to it straight away for no reason whatsoever. You know, he just just put, put an end to it. And we didn't see Prince William and Harry that time. And I know Harry was really devastated by that control element. So what I'm getting at here is that not to have a go at Prince Charles is the way that establishment has worked. But it's um, there's no way they could have gone out and done their own things without people stepping in and saying, you can't do that. You can't talk to this person. You can't do that. You can't issue your feelings. You can't be seen going shopping here. That control element of the royal family is there. Maybe not so much by the royal members actually, of the family, actually. Um, it was themselves, Rob, but there's personal staff. It goes, dates back hundreds of years. There's a huge, even the queen is controlled to some extent as well. So their, their branding is going to be massive. And you're right in saying that of course, they're going to they're gonna have to do PAs. They, they've basically done the biggest podcast TV show in the world to launch their brand. And if we can't realize that and we think it's just about clearing up myths, I mean, I'm not 
totally buying that at all. It's a bit of both. I mean, they're putting out there, they're cleaning up their personal branding, their image, and they're also probably doing something they're required to do in some very powerful contracts. You're right, if someone's going to pay you $100 million, they're going to expect you to go and promote on TV and drop things. And the one thing that was interesting about that interview, do you notice they never, they never attacked the Netflix series The Crown? In fact, they both agreed that they watched it, which I thought was a rather bizarre thing to say until you realize, after you come off the interview, that they've got a $100 million with, uh, deal with Netflix, right? So they're not going to attack it. They probably had to drop the, the name. So we're only speculating here, but there's no doubt that they're a billion-dollar brand. brand. They're going to go around the world. They're, they're going to need to sort their security out. I think for the family, it's going to be devastating. I, I really don't think it's ever going to be repaired. I, mean, I saw the way Prince William reacted to the press yesterday. It, it looked like he was in ang anger, to be honest, about how their his opinion on everything and not having contact with his brother. That riff will be there. He'll have people in his ear. Megastars do. Royalty do. I've been there. I've seen it. You know, I've got pushed out on occasions. I've had to try and get back in again and clear things up. Everybody's a yes man around them, telling them everything, everything you know, they want to hear, not the real truth. But I think Harry's a bit more wise, but he does need to start making some money pretty quick and staying focused on. The only thing I liked, really liked about the interview, Rob, which she came across really well, is he's clearly a family man. Because he said if he can achieve nothing else, then keep his wife and his son and his daughter that's going to be born soon safe by having the money for security, then he's happy. And I truly believe that. I think he's had enough. It's not really glamorous behind the scenes of the royal family. You only see the nice part of Buckingham Palace. The rest of it is it's in disrepair. I mean, these buildings are a thousand years old. You've got friends who are richer than the, the Queen. Well, I know that for a fact. They, they can't keep going on. The money keep, monarchy can't keep going on. So at some point, they're going to run out of money. So breaking away, I think, is the control element. They never have the freedom. And don't forget, too, Meghan Markle now, she really can be – she literally can take any movie offer she wants. She is going to be the most – powerful actress if she wants to make a blockbuster movie it's going to be incredible what she can demand on the, on that level so no one's really gone there with that i think movie star wise she's going to be there and with being a, in the royal family i don't believe she could have done that yeah look um from purely a lesson as an entrepreneur watching in the background i'm now just going to make a statement which is nothing to do with the royal history the rights and wrongs you know the press the media etc just purely looking at it as an entrepreneur and, and a, a personal brand play i actually think there's a lot to learn uh and i think that they uh, when he when he says matt yeah i just want enough money for security and to look after my kids well you don't need a hundred million dollar netflix for that uh, you, you know you you don't need quite as big a deal or as public a deal because the irony here is the desire to be private and secure and the massive press and uh, living in the hottest press city in po probably the world and going on the biggest show in the world. Now, if I wanted to promote my Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast and Oprah called up saying, do you want to come on Oprah? <laughs> I'd be straight away doing it. And then if Netflix wanted to make me a deal and Spotify did, I'd be all, I'd be all over it. And personally, I don't begrudge them that at all. I think some people thought, you know, maybe that commercial element was... Um, a bit nefarious i didn't think it was you know they're, they're launching their new life they've distanced themselves from the royal family and now everyone's going to be talking about them forever and, and the, the paradox of megan being maybe the most hunted woman in the world you say it a la dark princess diana but also the most in demand woman in the world i think that i would i'd be gobsmacked if they didn't make half a billion dollars out of this well they've already done 150 million dollars so they're well on the way. How can they not make half a billion or a billion out of this? And, you know, this really makes me um, be fascinated about the world of personal branding because they're a personal brand now, aren't they? Harry and Meghan. Um, if they could shorten it, you know, like people will say Megxit and Brexit and um, they shorten the, the two names into one. If they could, they would to make a proper brand out of it. So, Matt, let's carry on this conversation in Clubhouse because the people in Clubhouse have been really patient. So if you want the inside scoop, the proper discussions that we probably can't say in in public per se, then, uh, yeah, Ken's just said Began. Began, does that work, Harry and Megan? Began, I'm not sure. So we're going to move over to Clubhouse now. So my username is at Rob Moore. We have a live room right now. Uh, so I'll just put it on the uh, feed, at Rob Moore 
on Clubhouse. Come join us in Clubhouse and let's carry on this discussion. Love to get everyone's thoughts on this and where we think it's going to go. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. It was the first ever simultaneous live and podcast recording and Clubhouse room. Let's see how it worked. Let's get in Clubhouse, Matt, where we belong and carry on the discussion. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, this will be on the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast. This will be on the Money podcast. I believe this might be on, on Matt's podcast. Matt, what's your podcast going to be called when you go live? We're, we're working on that title now, Rob. Um, probably today we're working out with your team, actually. So, All right. We'll see you all in Clubhouse. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Remember to hit the share button. Uh, let me know what you think about this topic and the discussion in the comments. Love you all. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. <laughs>